10 Minute Jazz Lesson Podcast, Episode 51. Hey everybody, welcome to episode 51 of the 10 Minute Jazz Lesson Podcast. My name is Nick Manella and I'm the creator and host of the show where we seek to give you a short and concise jazz lesson every single week, complete with downloadable PDF from our website, 10minutejazzlesson.com. That's the number 10, minutejazzlesson.com. Hey, if you haven't heard, our Inner Circle membership is up and running. This is an awesome way to support the podcast. Think about this podcast like your favorite public radio station. We really do rely on your support to keep the show going. And this latest service is for only $5 a month. You get a transcription, you get a ready-made vocabulary list, and you get tons of other extras. So make sure you go and check that out, and please consider supporting us with your $5 donation every month. I think the value you'll get for that $5 far exceeds the money that comes out of your pocket. On top of all the four free episodes that you get every month, you will get some fantastic tools to make you a better improviser. So go to our website and click on the Inner Circle tab and then sign up for your subscription today and we thank you very much for that. We also have a brand new item in the store, uh, 25 Must Know Diminished Dominant Licks. This is some really awesome material that's going to get your diminished dominant playing together. I've gotten really good feedback from this so far. So go and grab your copy today, only $4.99 gets you an awesome 25 lines that you have to know in order to get that sound into your playing. Now, if you join the inner circle, you will also get 20% off of that item in the store and every other item in the store. So that, that subscription just keeps looking better and better, so make sure you consider it today. Okay, let's jump into today's episode. We are doing our monthly lick of the month. This uh, month, we're going to take a look at one of my favorite trumpet players in the whole world, Freddie Hubbard, and we're going to take a couple of his lines from the great Herbie Hancock tune, One Finger Snap. This is an interesting tune because it flies by at lightning speed, and it has very interesting chord changes, so it gives us a chance to look at a couple of different concepts and learn from what Freddie Hubbard is doing. So the first thing we're going to look at is one of his lines over a sus chord. And I haven't really talked about sus chords much on this podcast. We may do an entire episode on how to approach uh, these types of chords when you see them because they do happen to be an improviser's kind of uh, Achilles heel sometimes. You see a sus chord and you don't really know what to do about it. So let's look at this and then hopefully in the future I will have an, a complete episode ded dedicated to uh, what we can do over these sus chords. So take your uh, PDF sheet and look at the first line that I have written and you'll see that Freddie's playing over an F sus4 chord. So basically what that means, a quick overview, is that the third is not going to be played in the rhythm section. We are instead playing a fourth, and that gives us a completely different sound. So first of all, it takes the tonality away from the chord. This chord is neither major or minor, it's sus. And it has sort of a little bit of an... Uh, unstable feeling to it because of that lack of tonality. We're so used to hearing, you know, okay, this chord is major or minor. That's kind of the first thing that we listen to when we're trying to analyze a chord. This is a completely different animal. So one of the coolest things that you can do over a sus chord is you can play in the key, the major key, a whole step down from the chord that's written. So if we're playing an F sus, one of the coolest sounds that we can do is we can play in E flat major. And think about what that gives us. So if you think about the four chord tones over an E flat major seven, you get E flat, G, B flat, and D natural. So over an F sus chord, that gives us the flat seven, which sounds really great, the nine, which is essential over a sus chord. We actually get that fourth which is, you know, the most important note over an F sus4 chord because that B flat is really going to be 
hammered in the rhythm section. So we're getting that B flat in there as well. And we're getting the D, which is the 13. Also an awesome note to play over a sus chord. So if you look at the first two measures of the line, you basically get an arpeggiation of an E flat major seven chord. Or you could also think about it as a C minor seven chord with a ninth on top, but I prefer to think about this as the E flat major seven because I know that's something that I wanna work into my playing. So we see the first note in the measure is a C, and then we go right up that E flat major seven arpeggio, E flat G, B flat D, then we come right back down and he does it again, but on a different beat. So he's giving us a lot of harmonic interest, but also some rhythmic interest. And then the second half of the tune is, a, or the second half of the line is a little bit more kind of in the bebop style, where he's actually working his way through some chromatic uh, approach tones. And we do actually see the third in here which uh, you will see some of the greats play the third because basically it's up to them to choose what kind of tonality they want to play over that sus chord. So let me play the first line for you over this F sus chord. great line and you can hear those arpeggios over the first part of it um you know the more i listen to it the more i realize that it could be construed as c minor seven which is also a great chord to superimpose over a sus so you go to the fifth and you play the minor chord with the extensions over that that can really work well you know on top of that um major chord a whole step down so it's up to you you could look at that line in a couple of different ways and that's the beauty of analyzing jazz is that you can kind of come to your own conclusions and use it in a way that you want it to sound so the second line is uh, just a good old two five one in the key of f but it is played with the impeccable style and you know swing of freddie hubbard um, this is a great sort of standard line that uses some really easy to understand language, but just sounds amazing. So if you were to take this and put it into your playing, it would really be a great line to hit. So let's take a look at it. Over the G minor chord, we simply have one, two, three, four, and then it comes back to the ninth. Then we go down to the root, down to the seven. Now this is interesting, over the dominant chord, the first note that we hear Freddie play is the sharp 11. So he's working a little bit of tension into there. So we have the sharp 11 up to the 13, down to the 5, 4, 3, 9, then it goes to 1, dominant 7, and then we see the resolution point go from the dominant 7 to the 3 over the major 7 chord, over the F major 7 chord. So again, he's using uh, our principles of voice leading really, really well in this. He's going from the 7 to the 3, which is a half-step relationship. And then he has a really great line over the F major 7 chord, which includes a little bit of arpeggiation and a lot of scale. So you can see he's really mixing it up where uh, a great musician uses a combination of arpeggios and scales. And Freddie Hubbard's really doing that over the F major chord. So let me play this one for you so you can hear this great 2-5-1 line. So there you go, two amazing lines. If you haven't checked out much Freddie Hubbard, you really owe it to yourself to go and listen to a bunch of his recordings. He was a sideman for all of the greats, um, and there's definitely a reason for that. He really, really is, you know, one of the best trumpet players in the history of this music. Um, had a very modern edge to his sound, and I think is just second to none. Uh, he's definitely in my top five list of trumpet players throughout jazz history. 
All right, send me any questions that you might have. Um, I'm also doing a little bit of a poll on what I can actually add to that Inner Circle membership that would get you to sign up. Um, we want to make everybody happy here. We want to hit the, you know, everybody that listens to the podcast, we want to give you something of value. Um, and we really want you to sign up for that Inner Circle membership. So make sure you send me a, uh, an email at 10minutejazzlesson at gmail.com. Let me know. I'm definitely willing to add a lot more stuff to that membership. I just need to know what you guys are looking for each and every month that you really think would benefit you, and then I will make it happen. All right, everybody, we will talk to you next week. Hope everybody's having an awesome spring, and we'll be back with a brand new episode. Have a great one, everybody.